Dr. David Kimbrough, and Dr. Randall Hughes work to unlock the secrets of the inner tidal zone, where the land meets the sea. While our focus is on intertidal habitats, it's important to educate people on all ecosystems, on and off the coast. The E.O. Wilson Biophilia Center is actually named after Dr. E.O. Wilson for his work on conservation, preservation, and he actually coined the term biophilia, which means love of all living things. The E.O. Wilson Biophilia Center hosts roughly 100 students every day during the school year, averaging more than 5,200 kids every year. And we come out every year. It goes along with our curriculum. We're studying about Florida history and learning about our surroundings and things. It goes right along with the Common Core. We have 20 different lessons that we teach, including, you know, gopher tortoises, snakes. We talk about water conservation, managing the land, so many different things that we hope the kids take home with them. One last rule, we are going to actually go on a scavenger hunt, all right? And you are gonna work as a team to explore the center. <laughs> Okay, so the next step, what are the ingredients of photosynthesis? What's the second ingredient? Sun. Sunlight. you got to have light. Then what's the third? Water. Water. And then carbon dioxide. And then guess what? That gives us oxygen. Mm -hmm. We have learned uh, early on that obviously science is so important. In order to make that stick, all of our educators have their own little method. All right, so let's talk about the things that we can recycle. Styrofoam is rarely recycled. After Lauren's lesson, the kids play a game to test what they've learned. Go for it. Go, go, go. Work together. Who's ever doing hard work? He's doing hard work. It really does make a difference in the kids. So much so that even myself, I know now that I recycle more than I used to because I learned from coming here and learning the things that they have to offer. Does anybody know what the first stage along Long Pond goes through? Yes. Grass. Grass stage, fantastic. Right. So, seal file. The best teachers are the ones that let you get your hands on it. You saw that we have kids that go out in the water Go ahead, get in the water, get wet, taste it, smell it. That's the kind of stuff that they will always take home with them. What we're doing here is called dip netting. So we have our, our dip net here that we're going to actually put into the pond and try to catch as many things as we can, see what's living here, um, to tell if the pond is healthy or not. See anything moving? Oh, that's a dragonfly? It's a dragonfly oh, before wow. it gets into the dragonfly that we know of, oh, right? Oh, so it's, it's a dragonfly baby? It's a dragonfly baby, exactly. Now, the cool thing Whoa. about this guy Whoa. is that he actually has gills, like a fish. It can breathe underwater. It's got gills on its abdomen right here. And then there's Turtle Bob, who helps the kids get up close and personal with some of the animals. Remember that aquatic turtle has what type of foot? Web. So they can swim really web. fast. Web. A web foot, like kind of like a flipper. Well, a tortoise has an elephant-like foot, right there. And that's how you tell that from, from an aquatic turtle every time. Now, what kind of snake is this? Indigo. Indigo. And what kind is the one that plays dead? Frog nose, exactly. Oh, her tongue feels weird. I'm just going to touch it. The discussion we were just in with Turtle Bob, talking about the tortoises and the size of their burrows and things, and the animals that lived in there. When we go back to class, we'll talk more about that, research some of the animals, and come up with our own type of little reports that we'll do to enhance it. But they understand more about it because they've actually been here, seen it, and been a part of it. Although students can't hold her, the center also has its own American bald eagle to teach the important role that eagles play in our environment. On television, you see a great bird flying wings out and you always hear the pew, which is actually a red-tailed hawk. The sounds of an eagle roughly sound like a chicken. So would you want to have our great national emblem on television and all of a sudden, you know, rick, 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 rick. no, they always have put the red-tailed hawk sound along with the eagles. The E.O. Wilson Biophilia Center is now open to the public on the first Saturday of every month. I mean, with a center like this, you can't keep this a secret very long. So each one, we concentrate 
on different aspects of teaching the public types of things that we're teaching the children here. And they definitely do leave here a little bit of naturalist, hopefully a lot naturalist. For WFSU, I'm Rebecca Wilkerson. In the Grass on the Reef is funded by the National Science Foundation.